This video is to help students that are starting a project based on juxtaposition, whether that's for art or whether that's for photography. So hopefully the things that are inside this video will give you a little bit of inspiration and a push in the right direction. Now I've been powered up with a Muller yogurt that was flavoured with Turkish delight. I feel even more powerful to help you with this video. For the first slide here, just showing you a couple of influences that are essential for you to research if you're going into anything juxtaposy or juxtaposition. Uh, definitely Paul Citrin, Michael Spano, Rachenko and Rosenquist. I know Rosenquist is a painter, but he's a really, really essential if you are developing juxtaposition as an idea to respond to for your A-level. Um, this slide here, this is just making sure that you think about the definition and the meaning behind what is juxtaposition. It does mean different things in different circumstances, but in the case of photography, um, it's it's very, very similar to the original meaning, which is the fact of two things being seen or placed together closely or close together um, to create a bit of a contrasting effect. Hence why I put a bit of chalk and cheese on there and why I've started to combine things that are either big or small texture wise or old and new or you could say rough and smooth that could be a great way for you to start off and it could be something that could be done quite simply and quite achievable in the time this next slide is just to say don't just think about doing it separately with pictures and combining them together uh, try and think about merging juxtapositions together seamlessly in one image it will just show an increase in development in juxtaposition and sophistication you could maybe do the splitting first and then move on to the merging afterwards this one here, my wife will say exactly the same thing, uh, Pinterest. Get yourself onto Pinterest. If you haven't got a Pinterest account, oh my God, get one right now, as well as a Turkish Delight yogurt. They are great. Um, and at the same time, go on there, type in juxtaposition. There's no way that you can't find some sort of inspiration on there to get you started with your work. And like with these, one, these two images here, these could be quite easily achievable. They just take a little bit of planning and a little bit of thought. This is just to show you really that you can think and juxtapose anything anything but you must make sure for the examiner's sake and for your sake that you think carefully about it and it's relevant you know you don't have to be complex and deep to begin with but you might find you have more complex meanings as you develop your ideas onwards but start with something simple and then build it up and like it says in the bottom there you can always go off on tangents throughout your project the examiners love to see that but not as much as they love to see a clear intention behind your work that's definitely fully explained um, this artist is probably one of the first ones that you should look into, Paul Citroen, very, very famous photo collager, very, very famous photographer in general, really essential, critical influence to have in your work. Um, look up his Metropolis piece. Um, it's just really a groundbreaking piece when it was done, even though it looks a bit old and archaic now, really, really important to get that in your work. This guy here, Rachenko. He is known for a lot of different types of photo collage, but he also juxtaposed text and image together as well as unusually themed images. And if you're doing anything with a mixture of images, he's really good to get in there as an influence, whether it's like the more poster work that he did, or whether it's a straight standalone art collages. Michael Spano, uh, predominantly a social photographer, documentary photographer uh, of sort of like just general urban landscapes, but it was the way that he combined the images together that made his work so interesting and as interesting as my lovely Turkish Delight yogurt, I can assure you of that. Moving on to this next guy here, um, Rosenquist, I'll just put one of the images there on the right hand side, um, using a mixture of text and image, different orientations and different rotations of images together in one format, even though it looks quite simple getting the balance of space is very very tricky and especially if you're mixing together different colors it becomes even more tricky to get that balanced and to get it looking correct from uh, these guys here someone who's a bit more sort of local uk wise is sean hillen uh, like paul citron he is a collager of images but in this case he tends to use very real um, textures and then almost quite cartoon and illustrative um, images to create unusual juxtapositions in his work. You could maybe look at juxtaposing ideas, stereotypes, personas, themes, characters, that sort of thing, um, and look in stereotypes. Be careful because this can be done in a bit of a cliche way, so just make sure you look at what people have done first and see what's out there and then try and target something that's a bit more personal, a bit more meaningful to you. Things like fox hunting and showing the difference in social classes have often been done before and they can be a bit like a red rag to a bowl for an examiner. Um, moving on to this little bit on the fox hunting there, we did have a student a few years back who instead of just trying to show just the bloodshed um, involved in it, 
they also tried to show the community aspect, the charity money that was raised, and then also the participation from the local community, which was a different way, a different tack on fox hunting, but was really good when it was juxtaposed against uh, the more negative issues and images associated with it. Um, from one social sort of a thing to another, uh, this student here used darkroom processes to develop images based on personas of the political parties. Um, in, in one case, he used wine glasses to symbolise the Conservative uh, member there on the Conservative side and then spilt the developer onto the paper using that. The other side was then used with uh, something like more traditional that was used where the developer was mixed with oil and grease and where it was then put inside a pint glass instead. A little bit stereotypical, but it did the trick. Um, this image here where you can see where the image has been split then into different uh, combinations. That's just showing again, similar to Spano, similar to some of the images you've just seen, combinations of people in different urban environments. As well as imagery, it is sometimes text and imagery that you could look at that's quite interesting. Uh, Cunny Jansen, great artist, not just involved in text and image, got a great website worth looking at, but at the same time, a really, really sensitive and emotive pieces can be generated using text and image. So it might be an interesting one to look at. This next artist here, um, you can even look at David Copperthorne, uh, Simon Gardner, Doug Aitken. There's loads of people who use geometric um, rotation or abstraction, whatever you want to call it, where you juxtapose the either the horizon line or the angle of shot or the perspective just to transform the image. They can look really quite unusual uh, and even though they're very simplistic, can be quite effective to start off an idea. Can't really do any video really without sort of mentioning this guy. He's the absolute daddy. Uh, Jerry Yulesman, very, very famous photographer, um, essential for sort of like mixing surreal images together using darkroom processes, which is very, very tricky to get right and takes a lot of technical flair and ability um, to basically get all of the things that are in there looking correct, spatially in regards to one another. So Jerry Yulesman, definitely worth a look at. This next slide here is something that I've often tried with pupils to drop in and juxtapose sections of images to create uh, cropped joiners and crop compositions where you use little cheeky slithers of different sets of images, just as you can see on this image here, then combine them across a panoramic or a longer landscape image. Um, the trick is to get a variety of space, variety of sizes and a variety of like combinations of images together and it just takes a bit of practice but hopefully these this example here and these few examples just zooming by will hopefully do the trick and give you a bit of an idea um harking back to someone like sean hillen there's rauschenberg um he's very very famous for his print work especially but some of his collaged work is exceptional when it's like the mix of images and uh, of text imagery uh poster work really really good stuff great to look at um, some of the work here was obviously um, undoubtedly like effective in Rauschenberg one way or another in a photo collage sort of way. Um, but it doesn't have to be all uh, political or it doesn't have to be uh, something specific. You could make something quite surreal and unusual just as a starting point to get you started and then get more realistic afterwards. If it's collaging that uh, particularly floats your boat, get yourself on De Behance or uh, Raphael Vincenzi's website, aka My Dead Pony. He's a really, really stunning illustrator. Great composer of images in space. Definitely worth looking at if a photo collage is your thing. Um, nearly crawling until the end of the video. Thank God for that. You might want to watch the rest with the sound off if my voice is annoying you somewhat. Uh, but just here, um, you'll see something which I'm going to get my students to be trying uh, this year, uh, which is using uh, their workbook as an actual um, way of creating work. So finding where you've overlapped booklets, you've got like um, flaps and hinges and images of things that overlap and photographing them. Um, you could do that to create new potentials for images that you didn't even intend on having in the first place. And um, the next part of this, that same sort of like task there is just suggested here where you could throw random selections of images onto the table to see what you could have randomly or you could deliberately try and juxtapose and combine images together on a flat surface and then re-photograph. Then that resulting format would give you a new direction to your work. This next artist here, Bram Verheven, I don't know if I pronounced it right. Uh, hopefully he'll never hear this, so I won't get into trouble. Uh, and at the same time, he is a great illustrator, combiner of lots of different types of um, almost like quite cartoon and 
uh, illustrative shapes and bright colours with the photographic images as well. There's a bit of a um, change to that. You can maybe look at Gerson, um, a little bit like Yulesman, Jerry Yulesman, in the way that he combines images. But at the same time, he does it with um, uh, colour, still using often quite dark room processes, but it could be achieved in Photoshop as well. You've just got to be careful that you don't make it look too cheesy or too cliche. Then moving on to um, Haas Ernst, a really, really great series photographer, quite political, quite meaningful messages behind his images, but manages to show an amazing sort of conceptual story in a very small number of images. Mixing then the image and photograph together in a more surreal way, quite similar to Dali in um, some of the ways that he's using space and images together, is John Stezaka using magazines and portraits together to create one image which is, I don't know, slightly disturbing, a bit bizarre, I don't know, you'll have to decide for yourself. You might also look at Ben Hine who juxtaposes the real and the unreal um, with drawings back into landscapes. It could be quite easily achieved, um, but you've got to make sure that that's the sort of thing that you want to get in your work. Um, now, it's a bit of a random turn, chicken. Now, if you're a vegetarian like I am, this might be quite painful to look at. But at the same time, maybe think about how you could juxtapose what you typically expect, which would obviously be clothing here, um, to actually then convey a message about something that's important to you. That sort of thing could be an interesting thing to investigate. Um, these last two here, just something simple to start. If you're still finding you're stuck at this point and Pinterest hasn't solved your problems, which it's solved every single one of my life problems. Uh, so definitely make, don't forget to, to get yourself on there. You might something start off with something very simple, just where you're mixing and matching expressions, either that you've either photographed from yourself or you photograph from other people and mix them together. And then this last one here, Laurel Comas and uh, Ken jo Josephin um, mix then images back into original scenarios and juxtapose them together to create um, one image that has a new potential. I hope this has given you a bit of inspiration for juxtaposing within your own work. Uh, any questions, please email. Toodles.